Thank you very much, uh, Kang Barham. Thank you, Madam President, for inviting us, the Board of Trustees. I'd welcome all the <coughs> distinguished guests, but uh, let me recognize some of my friends who are here. The Deputy Assistant Secretary, Brett McGurk, who is joining us here and <coughs> on this forum. Former Foreign Minister and colleague Bernard Kushner from France, my good friend Zalme Khalilzad, member of the diplomatic corps from Baghdad and here in the KRG, I'd like to <coughs> uh, welcome you all to this forum. Really, Barham, as I said last year, <coughs> this forum give you a different taste, uh, a local taste. And geopolitics is about perspective. How do we see the world? How do you see our surroundings? But things have changed. I mean, this forum was, <coughs> nobody can believe that it would take place 10 years ago or 11 years ago with this gathering, Turks, Iranian, American, Iraqi <coughs> leaders, uh, politicians, uh, embassies, and so on. That means Iraq has changed. And we have to recognize that. Also, three decades ago, when Leila Zana was in prison because she wanted to swear his, her oath in Kurdish, now the, my good friend, the foreign minister of Turkey, is welcoming in his remarks in Kurdish here in Kurdistan. <laughs> so, this is a big, big change. Here also we have politicians, <coughs> senior Iraqi politicians, both from Shia, from Sunnis, from other communities, also can talk, can speak about their, their problems, their challenges in the future. And uh, this forum, <coughs> really because it is based in the KRG, should have an added task to question, to raise serious questions about KRG administrations, development, issues that matters, not just to make it a talking forum or shops. Really, these forums are important because they raise serious questions. Now, the theme of this uh, <coughs> session is about navigation, navigating through the, the difficult waters. And unfortunately, in Iraq, we have a problem. We have a lack of navigating skills. <laughs> and seriously, we have problem in navigation in Shat al-Arab. We have problem of navigations in Khor Abdullah with Kuwait and the North Gulf region. And it's a serious pressing problems, not to mention the political navigation. So we have serious challenges, but really, I think, as the Prime Minister <coughs> said in his opening remark, that the dialogue uh, can resolve many of the problems between the KRG and, and Baghdad, and I can reassure everybody <coughs> that there is a willingness to do that. There is a serious willingness to <coughs> resolve all outstanding issues. It may not be to the satisfaction of, of both sides, no, but there is a determined, a serious, because nobody is going to win in this. Everybody here is, is a loser. The new Iraq was built on consensus, was built on federalism, was built on democratization, was built on pluralism. And nobody knows this issue more than Zalme Khalilzad, who follows these issues. Now, this Iraqi consensus is threatened. It's really under a serious threat for the fall of this consensus, unless Iraqi leaders get together and really try to manage this problem. Especially, we are going through a very, very important, critical time uh, less than two months, we will have a general election. And this election is the most important of elections of all the previous ones. And people have matured with every election, 
we have seen really people have made advances forward. May not be <coughs> up to the expectations of all the people, but really we have seen a steady progress with, with the improving the political performance, economic life, uh, development plans, and so on. So that's why it is <coughs> important really to have our focus and to share the burden also. Everybody has to share the burdens in order to make this country really a successful country, a prosperous country in this part of the world. As for Iraq, really, <coughs> Iraq has always, I mean, after 2003, has sought to re be reintegrated into the region first, into the world, in the Arab world and to normalize relations with uh, its neighbors. Turkey was the first country whom President Talabani, I remember, we miss him a great deal here, who called for a strategic partnership with, <coughs> between Iraq and Turkey. And despite many of our differences and political problems, I think we <coughs> navigated Iraq-Turkey's relation well. Uh, not perfectly well, but uh, I think in terms of economic benefits, in terms of business, of work, of opportunities, still Turkish firms, Turkish companies have been working really from Zaho to Fa. And they have never been affected by the political differences, by the, the, <coughs> the difficulties that we faced in our diplomatic political uh, engagement with Iran. Again, I think after centuries of, of uh, hostility, conflict, this time we went to Tehran and offered really a new treaty of peace, of a long-term peace treaty, let's say, to overcome all the previous difficulties and the agonies of the eight years of wars and hostility and so on. <clears throat> with Kuwait, again, we have normalized relations with the Arab world, with the international community too. But we have a problem here, again, about geopolitics. I think we need to have a better understanding of our position. I mean, where, where are we going? What are the determinants for this? I mean, <laughs> geography is one of the constant factors. It may change by time, by technology, by uh, scientific revolutions, and so on. But really, the under-running currents is there. And uh, nations have struggled over territory, over power, over... Uh, but we are not seeing the end of history or the end of Cold War. We have now a growing crisis in the Ukraine and the Crimean crisis. Really, you don't know where, where this is going to lead you. And it's not very far from our region. It's not very far from our regions, but really this could set some new trends in international politics. Things are not constant. Things are moving and changing. The other major threat, actually, my country, it's time to speak about some national politics, not uh, local or international, is the, the threat of terrorism. This is a very, very serious existential threat to the new Iraq. And all those extremist forces, sectarian forces, radical forces, have really are bent on bringing down this experiment in building democracy, in federalism, in pluralism. And there are forces who want this to fail. I mean, we have withstood the pressure over the last 10 years we are at the cost of so many thousands of sacrifices, but we are not out of the danger. And this is not a pretext for doing nothing or not enhancing uh, political reconciliation or more inclusiveness or to resolve the Ambar problem or to reach out to all the communities to have a better governance, but terrorism is a serious threat. And the spillover from Syrian crisis is going to affect not only the streets of Baghdad or the 
built around Baghdad, but in Kurdistan itself, it could uh, strike again and again and again. Because again, this experiment here is not uh, welcomed by those forces. And that's why the government is holding actually an international conference soon in Baghdad. We would like to invite all of you, whoever want to attend. I think the idea is to focus attention on this uh, uh, threat that it is uh, daily actually. We're facing it, we're suffering it from that. Now on economic integration, we had many ideas, many plans with <coughs> my good friend Ahmed Beg on how to enhance cooperation, to enhance transport, to enhance links, uh, to resolve problems of water, of, of uh, others. We, we have ambitious plans, really, with, with Turkey. And uh, we, we are uh, determined to pursue this. The same, actually, with, with Iran, the same with the Arab countries who want to come to help, to invest, and to work with, with, the, with the, the new Iran. And uh, I'm really very delighted that uh, we have overcome so many challenges. We've taken this country from an isolated country that uh, it was broke, it was uh, really disrespected, uh, to a place where still we have a say. We have a say, we're together in Geneva too to discuss about the future of Syria. We have a say because we brought the five plus one to Baghdad. We have a say in many other places to have decisions, and we are the master of our decision and our destiny. Nobody should make any mistake about that. At the end of the day, it is the Iraqi national interest that really drives this country forth or back. Thank you very much, Barham, for this opportunity. And I want to